Yeah, Coach, I guess it's been a while since we talked to you just with the draft and this offseason as a whole. Was there Were there any big surprises or anything that really stuck out to you? We knew that we were going to lose some kids in the draft, obviously, and uh, we were just hoping that we might be able to keep one of those, you know, one of those three infielders that signed. Uh, fortunately, we were able to keep Sousa and, uh, you know, the, the money that was, you know, given them, so to speak, and where they were drafted, you know, there was, there was some tough calls, but they got what they wanted and and they stuck to their word. And, and, but other than that, I mean, probably some of the surprises were that maybe we got a couple more pitchers through than I thought we might, you know, and some big lefties and uh, some guys that really had, had put it out there that they wanted to go to college and they got a lot of money. And that's, that's why we didn't have maybe another five or six guys drafted anyway. Um, with the transfers, I'm assuming you're able to talk about more than you were before. Are you allowed to talk about all those transfer guys? Maybe not all of them. I think there's a couple that we're still getting some things finalized, whether it's transcripts and all that, but uh, probably all that you've seen, they're all coming just I can't speak maybe to a couple of them. Well, I'll start with shortstop and catcher because I know those those were positions a lot of people had their eyes on with White and Alloy. Just how how good do you feel to get big time prospects like that, huge players in their class to get, you know, productive play, pieces like that at those spots? Yeah, super excited about both of those guys. You know, they both have Division One experience. Uh, those are some positions that we felt that we needed to you know take care of a little bit more and uh, those are probably two of the better ones in the country and we we're fortunate that uh, you know in the case of Hudson White it worked fast uh, once he got in the portal we saw him there uh, you know we got on it and you know he was a kid that we recruited out of high school so we already had a relationship with him so I'm sure that helped a lot but uh, you know and then you know, you're, when you're talking about Bahiba and, um, you know, his name is not pronounced like it's spelled, so you guys will figure that out. But, you know, he uh, he had some really good visits lined up, and uh, we were very fortunate that he decided that th this was what he wanted to do. Um, and then he went, you know, he went on back home because he had to have some surgery, uh, not on his arm arm or knee or anything but he had to get some things taken care of and try to get healthy for this fall so we're excited about both of those guys Bob hey Dave how you doing good is Lincoln Riley a guy you can talk about um uh I don't think so no okay suit so, yeah not not everything's done yet Oh, okay. And, and White, you know, he looks like he's got great uh, hitting stats. His, def his defensive stats didn't jump off the page at me. Is he a guy maybe you're thinking about as a DH or, for, or a different position, or are you looking at him as a catcher? Um, he's a really good defensive catcher. He's not having a great summer offensively, but he's having a really good summer just catching and playing. Uh, he's had some, some good years offensively. Uh, no, I plan on being a catcher. Okay, maybe I misread those, or maybe he's gotten better. I don't know. But uh, and then you got two Mizzou outfielders. If you can talk about those guys, I mean, those guys aren't just you know high level uh, Division One players; they're SEC players. Um, and, and when you're playing other teams, sometimes do you think, yeah, if that guy goes in the portal, I might be interested in him, you know, or that that kind of thing? How, how'd that all come about? Well, you know, uh, basically they're. You know, you talk about Ty, he's an everyday player, center fielder, can really run, likes to steal bases, uh, very intelligent, um, you know, talk to their former coaches. Now at another university and had all kinds of good things to say about him. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about Ross a little bit, you know, he's a left-handed hitter that was injured a lot this year. And uh, we we feel like that, that he's a guy, you know, he, if he could stay healthy and be in the lineup that he can, he can really help us. So, yeah, I mean, when you're playing other teams, I don't think, 
we're just trying to win, but obviously, you know, you're thinking, yeah, well, I wish I had that guy here and there. I think that's just human nature, but you know, the way the recruiting has changed a little bit, I think there's probably a lot of that, a lot more of that going on. Thanks. Matt. Hey, good morning, Dave. What's the update on Dylan Carter and Peyton Stovall right now where they are in their recovery? Well, they're just working hard. They've been here all summer. Um, I think that, I feel like Dylan's probably farther along than a lot of people thought he would be, but, you know, he had surgery mid season, late season. So uh, it's going to be, it'll just be interesting to see how it goes when he can get back. And Stovall has been here all summer. He went home for just a little while, had the surgery, got back. He's been working with Corey super hard, our trainer. Um, you know, I think he's on pace or ahead of pace from everything that, that I've been told, uh, that's really about all we know right now. Do you know if you're going to play any teams uh, outside your own team this fall? Yeah, I would say no. Um, we just feel like that we have, you know, a lot of pitchers in here that we need to see them throw, and that would maybe take away a little bit. And, you know, when you play outside competition, there's – you know, then your roster is kind of set, your counter, so to speak. And uh, I don't think we're, we want to go there yet. So we will uh, have a, we'll have a really good fall when it comes to our scrimmages. We have, we have good players um, that can play multi positions. And we feel like our scrimmages are going to be super competitive try to get these guys some at-bats, see who can do what, who can run the bases, who can steal a base, and let some guys pitch, especially some of these younger guys. They they can kind of go show us what, they, what they've what they got. You promoted Bobby Wernus to a full-time role. I wonder, um, what has that done for your staff in terms of evaluations, being able to have more coaches out on the road? Yeah, you know, Bobby's done a tremendous job here uh, as a player and then as a young coach went away and then we got him back as our volunteer and then we hired him full time and super happy for him and just glad that we, we have him with us. Um, you know, as far as the recruiting, um, it just puts him out on the road. He's done a great job this summer. He's been all over the place as all the coaches have, uh, just makes us a little stronger. Tom. Tommy. Hey, hey, Dave, it looks like you got went more, a little bit more portal than, you know, whereas last year was more ju junior college. Was that a, just a, a product of the available talent or maybe a little bit of a philo philosophical deal? Uh, maybe a, it was the way it worked for us this year. Um, it just, it made more sense. Um, we had to see what we had throughout the season and what we were going to need. And so obviously that, a lot of the junior college kids were maybe gone, and uh, but 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 I think if if you ask me, I would probably rather, you know, if it, take a kid that's got Division One at bats or gotten Division One hitters out. Uh, if you're talking about right now, and uh, I feel like that uh, we we covered our bases this summer um, as as far as getting the the kids in here that we need to help us put together a roster that can can be competitive in the SEC. Yeah. Hey, speaking of the right now, um, your roster um, construction, do you feel like you kind of addressed every need and, and, and you got defense, speed, pitching, relief pitching, the whole kind of the whole works, you covered the gamut? We do. Uh, you know, you never know how it's going to turn out. Um, we, but we feel good about the experienced kids we have coming in. We feel good about, the guys that are coming back that were, have been in our program, that they've continued to develop and get better. And then the the freshman class that's coming in, it's still a really good class, even though, you know, we lost some kids uh, to professional baseball. And like I said, we knew we were. Uh, so we we tried to, to cover all that. And by going out and getting a couple infielders and, and getting a few more pitchers, it, it, uh, it really helped us. Joe. Hey coach, what do you um what do you make of Parker Coyle's summer in in the Cape Cod League, and and what do you feel like maybe his next steps are and where he fits into the mix as you start to look toward the fall? 
Well, he's had a tremendous summer, um, you know, pretty much out of the pen. Just coming in and and what he's done, he's thrown a lot of strikes and he's always had a good breaking ball. Uh, looks like he's really confident and he and he's just taking a step forward. I mean, he could come in and challenge to be a starter or, you know, there's a lot of roles for him. And, you know, we used him in some tough situations last year. Uh, some because it was towards the end of the weekend. We had a lot of injuries. We had to go with some guys that we didn't know if they were ready yet, and and he got us out of some jams. Uh, he started some games on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and, uh, you know, I think he's starting to, you know, turn the corner physically, starting to put on some little, little bit more weight, and I think that this fall will be big for him, and he'll be a big part of our team in the spring. Daniel. Coach, with all the injuries that you dealt with last year, is there anything you're doing kind of differently this fall or anything to kind of prepare all the guys to get ready? Yeah, we'll we'll make some we've made some adjustments. You know, when you talk about fall practice or the way we, you know, go about on the field, you know, workouts, it'll be it'll be pretty much the same. It's a formula that's worked. I mean, if you go back and look over the last five years, I think we've won more games than any division one program in the country. And we could go on and on about some statistics. So don't want to change a whole lot there, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll maybe shorten some things up and, and yeah, we're definitely make some adjustments. Mason. Yeah, coach, you got Will McIntyre back. Was there any worry that he might, you know, not come back and then also, you know, Zach Morris left just reaction to that. Yeah. Mac. McIntyre, we really wanted to get him back. And uh, but at the same time for him individually and for his, you know, his future, if, if somebody drafts him and they give him slot money, uh, we get it. And we we would have been super happy for him there. Uh, but we we really wanted him back. We let him know that. Uh, I think he'll be a big part of our pitching staff, love the experience and and the makeup and the stuff's good. Um, it should continue to get better if he's healthy. Uh, you know, as far as Zach Morris, you know, Zach did a lot of good things here for us and pitched in some really tough situations. And and you think about uh, his career, he had a good career here, but he just wanted to pitch more. I think he would be a conference starter and, you know, we couldn't guarantee him that. And, uh, you know, we got some kids coming back that have, have been there. We've got a couple guys coming in that have been there. Um, and I feel like that he just, he felt like that he needed to, to go and, and, and we get it. We're, we're going to wish him all the best we already have and, 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 uh, hope he does well. And you had a, a lot of guys playing summer ball this summer, just the overall health of everybody, you know, how are you feeling about that? Yeah. So far the health is good. You know, we've been keeping up with them. Some of the guys are just finishing up and, uh, we'll we'll keep an eye on those guys in, in fall ball. You know, if a, if guys uh, thrown a lot or played most every day in summer ball, we're going to give them maybe a little more downtime than maybe normal. Example, instead of catching or playing outfield every day, you know, we'll, we'll let them DH and just hit and save a little energy there. And then, uh, but they're still going to get their work. But I, I think that the summer ball – a lot of times you don't see how it helped you until maybe spring, but the developments there falls the fall, they'll get better. They'll be more confident. And then you'll see it. You'll see it down the road where they, where they make a jump. It was. Yeah. Coach, I wanted to ask you about Adam Hockman. I know he's a, one of those pitchers that you were really hoping might make it through and he comes through. What's the update with his rehab and sort of that timeline with him? Yeah. He had a little different surgery, um, you know, than just straight up Tommy John. He had the the internal brace, which is could be half the time. Uh, it's kind of a new thing, and I'm not going to go through all the details. And I'm that's kind of the way that you know that we hear hear you know it talked about it. It's an internal brace, and yeah, I feel like that uh, he'll show us what we need to do. You know, we're not going to rush him, push him. Um, if he's ready to pitch this year, he'll definitely pitch. If he's not, just get ready for the future and hopefully have two really good years. If we get two and a half good years, that's that's fine, whatever. Uh, big hard throwing left-hander, about six foot six, uh, six five maybe. Um, but 
you know, I, I don't feel like you'll be seeing him pitch this fall, but, you know, maybe in the spring. And if, if that's if that's the case, that'll be great. You've also got a lot of position players that seem like they can move around a little bit, like Jason Jones, Jack Wagner, and even Peyton Holt. I was just wondering how much you've allowed yourself to think forward of, like, where, yeah. you know, these guys might go, who all might move around, and who all could be bouncing around for you this fall. Yeah, I mean, obviously – Jones and Holt are already in our program. We already know what they can do. And they've, you know, Holt just had to get healthy. We wanted him to really limber up this summer. Uh, you know, he's strong enough. He's just got to be limber, limber and quick. And uh, he's worked on that. Uh, you know, Jason has had a, had a good summer. He's played every day for the most part up in Wisconsin. His team's done really well. I think he's, he's close to hitting double digit home runs, um, something like that. And, Maintain a batting average a little bit, driven in runs, got some big hits, and and played a lot of third base. So we're we're excited uh, about that. And I really I don't think I can really speak about Wagner yet. Uh, still working on a few things there, but but it's just some things that are you know that have to be taken care of. But it's all good. So and we have more that kids that that can move around and play different positions, and and that's going to give us some options. Bob. Hey Dave, you you were talking about guys in the summer. You know, we we all know that that, that Kendall Biggs really improved his defense, getting a shot to play in the outfield when he had the, some injuries. But I was, I don't know, it was about a month ago. It's about one a.m. I'm laying there on a couch, about half asleep, and I hear Sports Center top ten says Kendall Diggs, and I'm thinking, are you kidding me? And I kind of had to wait and then watch the re rerun of it. Um, did you see that play? Just what do you think about Kendall making the top ten for for his defense? He, he made a lot of good plays this summer. Um, some sliding catches into the fence, diving catches. Uh, I think, and you kind of said it, you know, just him getting in the lineup when we we had the injury to to Wagner, when he had to go to, you know, when we put Jace over and left and put Kendall in the game. And you could see game to game the, that he got better. It wasn't so – uh, mechanical, so to speak. It just got easier and looked easier for him. And uh, by the end of the year, you know, he was back DHing again, but we we had no issues putting him in, in the field. And obviously he'll be one of the front runners to grab one of those outfield spots. So it's been it's been good watching his development there. And I think for him personally, he knows when he, he gets back from summer ball that he knows where he's going to go, where he's got a chance to play. And you know, in the past, it's been bouncing around third, first, little outfield, and now he'll just he'll go straight to a corner outfield and get his work in and get ready. Do you think that's pretty cool, though? Maybe when his home runs got top ten on there, but um, him getting a defensive play, getting a shout out like that on national TV. Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, it's awesome. Anytime that happens, you're you kind of like like you. I don't stay up till one o'clock in the morning laying around like that, but you know, it kind of woke me <laughs> up and. Got you moving around a little bit. So I'm sure there's some other Razorback fans that probably did the same thing. Thanks, Dave. Matt. Big picture. What's important for your team this fall? Uh, really, really got to show us, uh, guys got to show us what to do on the defensive end. We're going to put in a lot of time on defense. And you think about the last two seasons, we've really played great defense and it's, it's helped us a lot. And uh, we spent a lot of time last fall on defense, and we didn't have a great start to the season defensively, but we kicked it into gear. And, uh, you know, I think we we surprised a lot of people uh, how good we were defensively when we lost so many position players from the year before. Basically, our starting left side, starting second baseman, we moved our first baseman to second, then he ended up getting hurt this year. But uh, – and then the outfield, the same way. We played good. We played really good defense. So spend a lot of time on defense. Um, we'll do a lot of scrimmaging, and that'll give us an opportunity to see if the defense is, that we're working, the, all the work we're putting in is paying off. And, you know, with the schedule that we have next year, and it hasn't been announced, but, I mean, the non-conference games that we're going to play and then conference games here, the, the fans are going to have an incredible home schedule. You have a date yet for the team practice when that's going to begin in September? Yes, we're going to – we we actually sent, some, sent something out to our guys, our team. We've, we've moved the days just a couple. Uh, we're going to start on Friday, September 8th. 
with full team practice. And that'll get us all the way to about the middle of October with our 45 day window, if we use it all. Sometimes we don't use the last couple of days and uh, we get those back for, for maybe in the in the spring. But uh, we'll see, we'll see how that turns out. And like, you know, our, our philosophy here is to get them here, go a couple of weeks with uh, their, they're kind of their position coaches in the weight room a little bit and then uh, get out there and get it going and get them off the field in October so we can get in that weight room, get them off the field. And, you know, I just believe that, that uh, guys need a little time away from maybe the competition of, of baseball and just kind of refine some things and get ready for, for January. Amazing. Yeah, coaches, uh, Mason Molina, one of the transfers that you can talk about. Yes, I can talk about Mason. Uh, just w what do you think about, you know, landing a guy like him, you know, with the season he had? And did did Hudson White have any role in getting him? Well, first off, you know, Mason is uh, – I mean, he had about – I think he when we talked, he had about 37 Division One schools trying to get him to come to school there. Uh, you know, we feel really fortunate that, that he liked it here. I know that – he took three visits. He went to Georgia. Um, I think he went to Texas A&M, and then we were his last visit. And we didn't know how it was going to go when he left. Uh, we felt like he had a good visit. I think he liked what we're doing here. Um, you know, we had some of the guys in town, so they got to hang out with him a little bit and talk about our program. And I feel like that always helps. Uh, so we're, you know, when you can get a, a pitcher that, has a couple of years of division one experience, especially, you know, in a, in a, in a really good conference, it, it, it should help. Um, if he's healthy, I, and I think he is, uh, I think that he's going to be a big part of our pitching staff. So uh, that was a big get for us. And, you know, as far as Hudson helping us, I never talked to Hudson about it, but I feel like that any time that if you have guys that are on one team, I mean, it's just, normal or human nature that they're going to say, Hey, you're going there. I might be interested in going there. So uh, I would say it was, it was definitely a plus on our side, but you know, who's to say, uh, I think that, that he, you know, he, he knows about how we handle our pitching and, and uh, a lot that we do here with our pitching staff and uh, all the technology that we use. And he just, he, he liked, you know, maybe thinking about coming to pitch for Coach Hop. So uh, that was a big get for us. And then also with the seasons that Josenberger and Jared Wagner had last year and then they got drafted, was that something that you were able to, you know, show to maybe some of these older transfer outfielders that you brought in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and we've done that with the class before and the class before because we, we've done a pretty good job of sometimes maybe not getting the biggest name, but maybe getting maybe someone who's just under that that comes in and has a really good year. And I think that, you know, you're talking guys that some of these guys know each other because Midwest kids and uh, playing our league or close to our league, you know, around this area and they, they follow, you know, if a guy came in here from KU and did really well and guy came in here from Creighton did really well or OU or whoever, they know these guys and they're following kids are keeping up with all this now. I mean, recruiting is so different than it was five years ago, as far as, you know, recruiting these older kids and uh, they're smart. They know they're hundred percent. They, they, they investigate and they're making phone calls and, you know, they're asking these guys, Hey, what'd you think about the way they run the program? Hey, what'd you think about coach Van Horn? Did you like the hidden guy? They're asking all those questions, and uh, I think the guys that have been in here over the last three, four years, these transfers, have done well on paper. They they had a chance to play pro ball out of here, and uh, they're definitely saying the right things to help us get guys. All right, Ellis, close this out. Yeah, Coach, Jake Faraday, uh, you know, he's been around for a couple of years. I've got a pretty good idea what the area of focus will be for him this offseason, but he, he seemed to draw a lot of attention for his stuff this summer. I was just wondering, do you think it's time for him to finally take that step forward and be a guy that you guys can count on in the back end? Yeah, I mean, that that's, that's going to be – I mean, his battle is the zone. 
And if, if, if he finds his own a lot, he makes a team and he, and he pitches a lot. Um, he had some really good days up in the Cape. He had some that didn't go so well. And probably uh, the coaches up there in a couple of situations just left him in where we never would have left him in, you know, and then the numbers were skewed a little bit, but uh, stuff's good. Um, it's got, it's got this fall and go out and do it. And uh, hopefully he does, you know, we're all pulling for him. Coach, appreciate the time. Okay. Thank you guys.